Hello everyone, I'm in the hangar with my Cessna 310Q and I'm doing a lot of updates and upgrades and renovations um, and I thought it would be cool to show you what it looks like when the plane is being torn apart for all these upgrades. I've, I've never seen at least a 310 anyway torn apart to this level. It um, For someone with a type A personality it makes me a little freaked out but things are organized and it's moving quickly. It's only been a few weeks and you're gonna see things are already well underway. A lot of the work was done, uh, particularly with the avionics in advance, so the wire harnesses and all that sort of thing to make things go a little quicker. But let's give you a quick look at the plane and, uh, and what we're doing. So this is a 310Q 1973. Um, I might try to add an image of what it should normally look like but um, holds about 163 gallons of fuel uh, in two main tanks. The, the tip of these tanks are off. This is called a tip tank. It's actually the main tank, holds 50 gallons, one on each side of the plane. And then there's another um, 31 gallons in auxiliary tanks on both sides of the wings. As you can see here, we're missing some engines. This should be an IO-550A. Uh, this particular plane was originally a T310Q, which means it was originally a turbo 310 that had TSIO-520 engines with a turbocharged system. Normally with a 310Q, a regular 310Q, these um, exhausts would have run in augmenter tubes to the back, but the, the turbo system, the exhaust comes straight down. Uh, this is part of the exhaust manifold here, uh, but the this STC to, to replace the engines with non-turbocharged engines is called the coal mill two conversion, and it um, gives you 300 horsepower on each side. And I live on the East Coast. I live in Pennsylvania, not quite on the East Coast. I'm closer to Pittsburgh, but. Um, I don't need to climb over, typically over 10,000 feet. I usually cruise between eight and 12,000 feet, uh, sometimes 14, depending on, um, on the conditions. But these engines get me up there and I'm going plenty fast, uh, probably 270 miles an hour. Um, and it's, it's quite lovely. So the removed IO550As are actually sitting right here, getting ready to be returned to the factory in these big crates that they're underneath and the new engines uh, are underneath so there is a brand spanking new factory new IO550A um, that's going to be plopped right there uh, let's see what else um, I, I because I was redoing the engines the, this when I bought this plane it had high time engines that were actually running okay but um, they were using a lot of oil and I replaced three cylinders and uh, there was some pitting on the lifters and some problems from, from it not being flown several owners ago. I think it sat for probably 10 or 15 years, which is never good on an engine. And so it was time to replace the engines. Uh, and while I was doing that, I, I'm, uh, I'm also planning to do the avionics. So it made sense to run all of the engine monitor wires uh, up at this time into the fuselage and the cockpit. Uh, and several other things. We're adding uh, recognition lights. Uh, these are strobes. There's going to be a recognition light here that, uh, that uh, flashes uh, forward. Uh, like, like some people call them wigwag lights. There are also uh, landing lights that are right here. These like scroll down and that's a nice uh, bright LED. It really lights up the runway nicely. But the uh, recognition lights really help uh, in traffic. And since I go a lot faster than a lot of the slower 172s and uh, Warriors that are typically in the pattern, um, it, it helps them see me coming uh, a, little, a little easier. So at any rate, uh, the engines are going on and we decided to go ahead and do the avionics at the same time because of all the wiring and that sort of stuff. And we've been planning for the avionics for many months, so it's going very quickly. As you can see, there's a lot of wires hanging out here. These connect to the circuit panel, which is right on the other side there. 
Um, this used to be a bunch of uh, components, old, old components for the avionics. These shelves will remain empty. The only thing that will get added here is a previous owner removed the oxygen tank. I've been using auxiliary oxygen with, with a separate bottle. A new tank is going to be going up uh, kind of vertically uh, inside the, um, the nose and then you access it through the landing gear uh, opening for the nose and that's how you service it. There's a little port that the uh, that you can add oxygen to, but it's a much bigger tank than the portable one I use, uh, which will make it a lot easier. And we're replumbing the oxygen in the main cabin. Here's the other new engine getting ready to go on. Um, and all of the, the stuff that's on top of the wing is just the cowling, the entire part that goes over the engine. Uh, well, this is called the nassel. Um, and then these carts hold things particular to the engine that we're some of which we're keeping or replacing um, there's another card on the other side that has the, uh, the the components for the right engine um, so back to the avionics on this side there used to be a motor here that was uh, for the gyro that's gone this is actually the heating system this is new the previous owner did this this is quite nice um, that is powered by avgas and it's so it's so it's a gas heat um, and it because there's no engines in a typical single engine I like my previous plane was a 182 you just use the heat from the engine uh, to to kind of the, the there's a shroud around the exhaust and it pulls that heat into the cabin but you don't have an engine sitting in the front of your plane so you need to make make heat so that's what this does um, it's it's neat because with the plane torn apart like this you can also see between the wing and the uh, fuselage all the fuel lines and electrical components that go into it. They're going to be adding some new things, like I said, that recognition light, all the wires for the, um, the engine monitors have to go through the wing, the wing route here and into the engine cavity so that they can connect it to the engine. Uh, let's see what else. Um, in here, what, for those of you who know what it looks like to have this removed, this is actually a prop sink. This is the coolest thing in the world. When I turn that on uh, in the engine, in the, in the cockpit, it, it, I, you get the props close, like just slightly uh, out of sync. And when you turn that on, it syncs them up so that if you're at 2300 RPMs, both props are at 2300 R RPMs. Makes a lot, a lot easier. In fact, this is the prop lever and this extra tube is from the prop sink because it controls, um, it, it, that, that's what controls the right with the left. All right, let's walk around here. Uh, this case over here is all of the avionics components that have been removed. Well, actually, it's not all of them, the GPS and a couple other things um, are not in here. There's the circuit panel. Uh, this thing uh, actually is gonna probably get replaced or we're gonna have to add some new wires to it because we're, we're adding some components. More old components. This box is filled with an old 450A, Cessna 450A. I'll be trying to sell that. Probably someone can use it for parts because it's hard to find. They don't make them anymore. Um, and then, the oh, I almost forgot. Uh, down here is my prop, which is a Macaulay three-blade aluminum prop. I am replacing both props with four-bladed uh, MT composite propellers. Uh, I had a composite propeller on my 182, and I just absolutely loved it. It eliminates a lot of vibration. It's a little lighter. Um, creates a little more drag and cruise, potentially. And, uh, but it's, uh, the thrust on takeoff is amazing. And it actually can kind of be used as an air brake. Um, and with twins tend to vibrate a little more. So I'm hoping that will eliminate some of the vibration and it also make it a little quieter to fly, which, uh, which will be nice. Uh, we're also doing the avionics. I mentioned that this little table, you can see the old uh, configuration. Let me hold that up somewhere with some white background. 
That's all the steam gauges from pilot side. And this was the co-pilot side uh, previously. Uh, the new gauges, this is the pilot side. Uh, I'll show you inside. Those are uh, three Aspens and the engine monitors are below and to the left is a clock. Uh, but if we go into the plane, you can see that that is also torn apart. Uh, pretty much completely. The headliner's coming off this week. The upholsters are coming to get that off. The interior is in great shape. I'm not replacing the interior except for I'm reupholstering the seats because I want to get some new cush cushions in there. But otherwise, it's it's really nice. It was done in 2018. Um, there used to be in the back here. This there's normally a little wall here. This shelf used to be where the 450A autopilot servo and computer was. Um, all that got removed. The only thing left, you can see that kind of greenish yellow box is the new ELT. And the servos for the new autopilot, which is going to be an STEC 3100, actually get moved here to the center of the aircraft, right below the second row. Um, it gets, in fact, I think it's mounted on the underside of this. Um, and then something else, oh, it looks like it's already gone in. There's another, there's a servo right there that's already gone in. This is a flat motor, um, and you can see down here the trim. I think this is the trim wires. Um, we've got the uh, rudder and the elevator controls. Uh, those all will get uh, connected to these servos. And there's very specific instructions on how this is done. They have to be the STC says exactly where it goes, and it, it has to do with the weight. Um, I'm amazed. Uh, for such a small little motor that that servo can pull what it needs to pull. You can see the cables, uh, ailerons, flaps, all that sort of thing are exposed. Um, you can even see the internal vents uh, for the air vents. There's actually an event. Th this thing right here is sort of like a cold air return. There's a vent underneath there. Let's go up into the front of the cockpit. Again, the, uh, the fairing is removed, so you can see the whole wing root there. If we look in here, um, the reason these three panels, there's a panel here, a panel in the center with the two openings, and a panel on the left, they're three different colors because these are temporary, so we can get them to fit, um, and I, we wanted to see the colors. This is kind of a light, very light color. There's a gray color. Uh, it's kind of similar to the, the previous color and then black um, and I, I prefer the black because I think the backlit screens will look better with the, the black. Um, so uh, from right to left if we're looking on the co-pilot side this is going to be a backup Aspen um, a Pro Max and then this is going to be an old manifold pressure gauge RPM and a shade and fuel flow so those are backups. On this side, we're going to have a uh, um, 450B, PSA 450B audio controller and a uh, IFD 540 GPS. Below that, in this, um, closer to the pilot, there's going to be an STEC uh, 3100, an IFD 550, and a Lynx, I believe, 9000 with active traffic. Then a Aspen in the main pilot side there. There's going to be an Aspen uh, 31 or uh, Aspen 2500 Pro Max. So it's like the three screens, and those three holes below it are the engine monitors. And then there's a little clock up to the left. So that will all be black. I'm not sure if we're going to switch this out to black on the bottom. Um, new cables will be run for. The throttle and the prop because they're not working uh, properly. They, they, they're really hard to use before we started this project. The blank hole there is where the um, circuit breaker was. That will get put back in after we get all the wires run. The wires from the front to the back typically go along a track right here and that track, that used to be filled with at least another inch or two of wires. In fact, there's a garbage can behind, I'll show you when I get up, filled with probably 20, 20 25 pounds of wire. Um, there was like a separate wire for each part of the controller for the old autopilot that got removed. Um, all these remaining wires, a lot of the wires in there are will, will be kept. 
Um, like I think these are for the manifold pressure uh, or the RPM. I can't remember which. Uh, they'll get they'll get hooked back up back up to some of these gauges. But it's it's a bit overwhelming. But they're going pretty fast. I mean, this is only a couple weeks, and um, and they're already they're already getting coming along. So let me get up here. I don't see that garbage can anymore, so maybe they took those wires away. Oh, it's over here. Uh, probably can't see underneath it, but... Um, no, maybe that's not the same garbage can. Anyway, it was filled with wire, a lot of wire. Uh, back here, you can see they've removed some of... Uh, th things that will connect probably for the autopilot. Um, we had already done the LED lights. Um, I think that's about it as far as what's going on. It's, it's quite a project, but going to be very worth it. Uh, I, I can't wait, wait for it to be done. And I, I can't say enough about how well it's going so far. Um, I know it looks like this is complete disarray, but it's actually quite organized. And when they're on it, they're on it. And it's going very well. So I'm really excited. I look forward to, uh, I'll try to keep you updated. It's hard for me to get out here, but um, I'll do it as best I can. And then maybe we'll do some flying videos when it's all, when it's all over and we can show you uh, how she flies. I don't have many, I didn't take many videos uh, before I started this project. So in fact, this is my first. So we'll, we'll grow on this journey together.